Well, hello everybody. It's the Instant Match Reaction. Apologies for all of this. The technical issues have been absolutely fine. They were absolutely fine. There was no problem. We're having a lovely watch along, a lovely stream. And then out of nowhere, bang, Wi-Fi goes off. And we have loads of technical difficulties when it comes to Radio 1. Gabe fell asleep. <laughs> So listen, it's been uh, it's not been great this evening, so apologies for that. But I am getting my instant match reaction out to you guys. And Leeds breached the top two. Great news. We're back in there. We're back in there for the first time since Marcelo Bielsa's reign. It feels like it's been it's been coming. It's been coming, and it's great that Leeds United have now done that from a mental perspective, the psychological aspect, and the imprint that that's going to put on the other two who are going to be looking at Leeds now and thinking, okay, Leeds are serious. Because sometimes I do feel like the other two maybe have been looking at Leeds and thinking, well, it's quite far off. They are quite far off and we were quite far off but now guess what we're in we're in with a shout and you'd rather have points on the board than games in hand which uh, Ipswich and Southampton do and do they will they win one of those games will they breach that they, they probably will do however it's that psychological thought process of Leeds being back up there now Leeds United showing what we're made of and Leeds United almost having so much artillery now you when you look at what happened with Jaden Anthony against Plymouth that absolutely mesmeric goal when you look at William Yonto's contribution tonight left foot straight down the middle keeper Max O'Leary completely bamboozled overall this is what we have off the bench this is what we have that 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 level of player and this is what I've been trying to say when I keep talking to you guys about about Daniel Farker's expectation and and, and the obligation to get Leeds United promoted this year because that's what it is it is an obligation because we're too good we're simply too good when you can rotate like you can rotate tonight. When you can put Ethan Ampadu at the back and it looks completely seamless. When you can put a second choice left back in there, which Firpo has been this season because of injury, but Sam Byram has deserved his place at left back. When you can put Firpo in there, a second uh, sort of uh, rate left back who's been put in there and he can do what he's been doing in the last five or six games. Arguably got another assist tonight. You can put Patrick Bamford, who's proving a lot of people wrong at this moment in time. Back into the side, second-rate striker when it comes to him and Junior Firpo with their sort of squad dynamics. You know, it was uh, uh, sort of um, Joel Perot uh, who was going to be that starting number nine. Number nine, as we all say, but he isn't a number nine, of course. But he was supposed to be that starting guy up top. Bamford's coming in, he's doing what he's doing now. So even the second string players within our side are, are really proving it right now. And they're stepping up. And it was brilliant to see that from Nonso tonight. The release of a lot. It'll have been a lot. Being in and around the city, doing what he did, not moving on, and giving the fan base a lot to think on, and a lot of fan base who will never forgive him. I've always said that I think he'll win the Leeds fan base back, and he has done, in my opinion. I said he'll do that with goals, he'll do that performances, he'll do that with their effort and endeavour. And that's all of what he's accomplished, in my opinion, so far at Leeds. If he signs a contract, it's all hunky-dory again. And that's how players win the trust of the fans back. And tonight, there'll have been people down there at, at Bristol City and they'll have seen his release. They'll have seen his, his, his aura, his happiness when he scored that goal and just that complete roar towards the Leeds fans. And they'll think, do you know what? OK, I'm back on side now. And Willie Nonso tonight showed a lot of why he was in the side and, you know... I did think the substitution of Jaden Anthony coming on for about eight minutes didn't really make a lot of sense. I'd also put up there Joel Perot coming on for a minute. Didn't really make sense. I don't really understand why that calibre of player is coming on for those little minutes. You know, you put them on for me when players are tired. I thought Willie was tired for about 25, 30 minutes. I also thought Pat Bamford was tired for about the last 20, 25 minutes, to be quite honest, a little bit sluggish. And it came into his passing and all this sort of stuff. So I did think to myself, you know, that, that sub needed to be made a little bit earlier on for me. Um, and it also gives those players a little bit of time in the side and, you know, players of that calibre, you know, they, they need to be playing minutes as well. You know, they don't have to play the full game, but, they, you know, give them some minutes, I thought. But Daniel Farker's man management of Willie Nonso has been nothing short of superb, you know, warnings saying to him, look, he's going to be out the side. Was out the side, wasn't scared to not put him back in, especially after his good performances at the start of the season. Ipswich been one of them. He wasn't tempted to put Willie Nonso back in. He wanted a good, harmonious group. And he's really managed that well, Daniel Farker, I have to say. From back to front, Elan Melier. I uh, thought he was much better tonight. I thought there was one opportunity where they went through and it was a good save, a really good save from Elan. I'd be expecting him to save that. I'm, I'm really trying not to be harsh there, but I'd be expecting him to save that. It was a good 1v1 save. On top of that, I thought his anticipation, there was one little header back that Ethan Ampadu made. Melier had to come out and get it because it was a short header. 
Um, he came out and did really, really well. So overall, not a lot to do for him again. He got some good punches on it. I thought Melee did well tonight. Archie Gray was just superb. Just superb again. The only thing I can criticise Archie Gray for is just that final pass sometimes. Sometimes he loops it a little bit. I think when he's running with the ball... I don't think he gets the connection on it, which is perfect. You know, sometimes you'll see a right... I hate to say it, but David Beckham was always great at doing it, running down that, that right-hand side, whipping that ball in whilst he's in full pelt, and it's still been a quality ball. That is a really, really difficult task for any young footballer to master. And Archie Gray, if he's able to do that, because he has the technical ability, he's got that projection, he's got that trajectory in his career, um, if he adds that to his game, wow. You know, running at speed and really being able to deliver a ball in like that. I thought you saw a couple of times tonight where he was running at speed and two or three of the balls were, were put just a little bit too over or a little bit under or a little bit scuffed. But once again, his, his ability is just... It's, and this is why at the start I said, you know, Jude Bellingham, I look at him and I genuinely believe his trajectory can be as high as, as, as someone like that, you know, maybe playing for a Bayern Munich but or playing for one of the top sides in, in Europe at some point. But as of now, he'll stay at Leeds United. You know, I just think Archie's such a good player. Um, you know, you go through the squad. I thought the midfield were a little bit problematic tonight. I didn't like a lot of the closed body stuff. Um, I think sometimes when they're getting the ball, and I've mentioned this, I like them having the feet at 10 to 2 at points, opening the body, expanding the play a little bit, getting the ball on the back foot, opening the body, and just spraying that ball. I think we get that ball over the press, which we saw today with Elan Mele, to be fair to him, with Ethan Ampadu. The reliance in this game was on Ethan Ampadu to play that ball numerous times in and around the channels but also to Pat Bamford and bypass that midfield of which Bristol City were trying to press on that Leeds United midfield and back line the onus was a little bit on Ethan Ampadu I want to see more from the midfielders I want to see Alaya Gruev I am convinced I'm definitely convinced but I want to see Alaya Gruev get the ball a little bit more and dictate it open his body up a little bit more go forward play, so, play those long rangey balls which we've seen sometimes from him but I think there's opportunities for him to do that and do you know why? Because Leeds are so dynamic out wide and our wide players hug the touchline so if you're a midfield player a central midfield player it is absolutely stupendous for you you know if you're Calvin Phillips in that BL system and you've got this lot in front of you that four in front of you just start to exploit it and I think Kamara sometimes is a little bit a little bit problematic. I think you've got Rodon Kamara and Gruev, who sometimes filter a little bit into just passing the ball laterally and these short passes when these fantastic long passes are on. And to be fair, Elan Mele with his long kicks, Ethan Ampadu getting the ball and looking to play that ball consistently to Pat Bamford's feet or over to Rutter or over to Somerville really gives that gives us that sort of transitional advantage getting forward and causing the midfield. Because if you get sort of behind that midfield and those four are running at the defence, it's a big, big problem, a real big problem for any team. You, know, you could put Leicester and Southampton in there as well. But Leeds were good tonight. Somerville, I think, is ball-carrying ability and Rutter, ball-carrying ability. is just They're just the ball-carrying standards of those two. Just Premier League level, what they can do on the ball. The problem is it's the finishing. For both of them, I still think. I think both of them have still got a long way to go when it comes to that finished article. But they're still so young. Willing on to, I thought, tonight, as I've mentioned several times, I thought the finish was great. I thought he was very quiet in those first 30 minutes, but it's a confidence thing with him. He's been out the side for so long. Been out the side for so long, he gets his start. You know, we remember his start against Stoke City, which is probably the last time he did start a championship game where he was just completely off it. And, you know, he looked a little bit of a shadow of his former self today, I thought, in those first early exchanges, but he really grew into the game. And um, overall, everybody, it's a real positive start to the weekend. Leeds get the win. We breach the top two, which is absolutely massive. We win the game. We've got another clean sheet. You saw Joe Rodon giving it to the crowd as well when we got another clean sheet there. Ethan Ampadu just looks brilliant alongside him. I still want Pascal to come back in, obviously, and Ethan to move in the midfield. But the dilemmas across the pitch now. Who picks where? Does Archie go back in central midfield? Where does Connor Roberts slot in when Archie's performing like that? What do we do? How do we manoeuvre this? Is Perot ever going to get back in with Patrick Bamford? What about Jorginho Rutter and Perot? Is there a bit of a conversation there? Does Willie Nonto and Dan James now start to become a little bit of a competition? This is what we didn't have with that Bielsa side because we didn't have as much quality and depth. With Daniel Farker's side now, he has so much artillery in this squad to be able to really, really, really impact this division. And you saw over the past two games where you've got Jaden Anthony scoring a sublime goal, William Nonto taking a really, really well-taken goal tonight, that we have match winners who are on the bench. 
you know, this is what we're talking about right now. Leeds start the weekend in the top two. Guys, once again, sorry for the technical problems. We are going to be back with three things we learned tomorrow morning. So stay tuned for 10 o'clock when hopefully we're all good on this sort of front. And uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I'm going over to the Patreon now for a little bit of bonus video content. Head on over there if you want. Links in the description below. And I'll see you in a bit.